on, we can do better than that. Come on, let's bless God for the music ministry, for the choir. Amen. We thank God for them. Thank God for each and every one of you that are here today. We, it, it wouldn't have been church service. It wouldn't have been worship. It wouldn't have been fellowship unless you had been here. And so thank God for each and every one that is here today. God bless you. You're in the right place at the right time. Thank God for all that our eyes have seen, our ears have heard thus far. If you don't mind, stand to your feet for just one moment, just one moment as we proceed. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. It's good. It's good. Could have been so many other places, places it didn't want to be, but, but God brought us here, and we ought to thank him for that. We ought to praise him and just give him the glory for bringing us to his house, to be in his presence, to be blessed by him. It's good to be here. Good to see all of you here today. And let, let us um, bow our head for a word of prayer. Let us pray. Dear gracious God, we give you thanks. We give you all the praise, all the honor, all the glory, for it belongs to you anyway, Lord. We just thank you for, for bringing us here to your house of worship, to your house of prayer. Lord, I, I, I thank you for the prayers that have gone on, that have gone up to you, Lord, and we know you're answering prayers right now. Thank you for the songs that have been sung, Lord. I, and now, Lord, I, I pray that you just use me for your glory. Strengthen me, Lord. Give me what to say, Lord. I, I know I come with notes, Lord, but I, take me off script if you want me to, Lord. And just use me that you would get the glory out of all that's done here today. We just thank you, Lord, for lives being changed, bodies being healed relationships being stored, people being saved. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the great work that you're doing in this ministry, in this region, in this country. Lord, we just thank you so much. Bless now as only you can. As I attempt to preach your word, strengthen me, bless me, Lord, to be a vessel meet for your use, Lord, and we give you thanks. Thanks in Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Going to just lift up one verse today, one verse, and take our, our thought from there in Psalms, the uh, 91st chapter of Psalms, the, the very, very, very first verse, just going to read that, that, that one verse there. It, the scripture says that he that dwelleth in the secret place, come on somebody, of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. L let, let me say that again. It said he that dwelleth in the secret place, somebody say secret place, of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I want to talk today about intimacy with God, and really I want to talk about the secret place, the secret place, the secret place. I, I didn't get many amen. Maybe by the end of the message we'll, we'll understand what that secret place is for and, 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 and where it is in our life. Um, and, and so he, the, the psalmist lifts up, opens up this 91st number of psalms and, and, and tells us that, that there's a dwelling place and, and it's called the secret place of the Most High and, and abiding in that secret place brings blessings into our life. Uh, but in the scripture text, the, the right, uh, the, uh, this writer speaks of the secret place, but I just want to jump to the New Testament in Mark, in, in the book of Mark, uh, Jesus tells us there that there are other things that we ought to do in secret. He says when you get ready to uh, give your alms, he says don't do it like the folks do who go uh, to the offering and, and throw in a whole lot of money to hear it rattling and jingling. He says when you give your alms, give it in secret, give it so secretly that your right hand doesn't know what your left hand is doing. He says when you go to pray, uh, don't pray in the, in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the passageways or on the sidewalks and in the roads and streets and on corners and stuff. He, he said take your prayer to your prayer closet and, and pray in, in secret, and, and the Father who hears your prayers in secret will reward you openly in front of others. So he says, you know, don't, don't make it a show of, of being real religious and all that other stuff like the hypocrites do. And, and then he says, when we fast, even when we fast, when we turn down our plate for a day, for three days, for, for seven days, for 40, he said, when you fast, he said, don't, don't go around uh, um, and, and make a public display of it looking, you know, sad, bad, and, you know, face drooping and, and all that so somebody could ask you, what's wrong? 
and, and, and then the reply will be, well, I'm fasting for the Lord. You know, that, that's a pitiful testimony uh, for the Lord that, that we're going to be pitiful just because we're fasting. He said, don't do that. He, he says, whatever you do, if you're going to fast, he says, get up in the morning, wash your face, brush your teeth, put oil on, uh, put your per best perfume on, your best clothes on, and step out like you just ate a steak dinner. But don't let anybody know that you're fasting because whatever we do in secret for the Lord, he'll bless us openly in public before people. And so th there are times when we need to be secret, um, and, and that's spoken of in the New Testament. But I want to talk about this secret place here that this psalmist speaks of in the 91st chapter, in the 91st number of, of psalms. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah. In, in, in this scripture text, the writer speaks of a place which refers to a secret place, a secret place of the Most High. And, and I believe that it's, it's, a, it's an awesome place to be in that, that secret place with the Lord. And as we open up this message today, I just want to uh, first get an understanding of what the concept of intimacy is. I know most of us think what intimacy is. We think it's, you know, loving and being, uh, you know, mushy and all that other stuff. That's intimacy. That, that, that's all right. But, but um, and we have a general understanding of what intimacy is, but, but I'm talking about intimacy with God. And that's different than intimacy with man, with woman. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Okay. All right. Intimacy. Intimacy deals or, or refers to things that are personal and private. It's a private matter. It's a state of being. Uh, uh, when it's a private matter, it's usually an intimate thing. Um, intimacy is defined as a very close association or contact or familiarity with, pers uh, with people or a particular person. Intimacy is also marked by a warm and close friendship developing through a long association, as with friends or even with lovers. You can be intimate. It's a very close relationship with one another. But the bottom line, intimacy is defined or identified as a close personal relationship. And so intimacy with God, that secret place. Uh, our text is taken from the 91st number of Psalm. And in the very first verse, he speaks of that secret place of the Most High. So uh, um, in, in order for us to, to get an understanding and understand what the psalmist was talking about when he said secret place of the Most High, I, I hope you don't mind. I, I want to take us back to much further in Scripture uh, and start at the beginning of things because I found out that starting at the beginning of things is a good place to start. Let's go back to the beginning, really to the, the book of Genesis, the third chapter, uh, that, that original secret place that God had in, uh, with the first people here on earth, Adam and Eve. Is that all right? Can, can I go back to Adam and Eve? Yeah, yeah, they were blessed beyond measure because they had the original secret place with God. You remember that. It was in the Garden of Eden in the third chapter of Genesis, uh, a place called Paradise, a place called the Garden of Eden where, where, the, where God would come on a regular basis and meet with Adam and Eve. And scripture tells us that the voice of the Lord would go walking through the garden in the cool of the morning, and, and it was his voice, it was his word, and his word is who he is. So even though they may not have seen a figure of God, they, they heard his voice, and his voice, his word always represents who he is. And so his word went walking through the, the cool of, uh, of the morning into the garden, and, and, and he would come and, and meet with Adam and Eve to talk with them, to commune, commune with them on a regular basis. And as I picture this scene in my mind, I know that it had to be an awesome event for Adam and Eve, uh, a time to meet with God on a very personal level, um, uh, a time to, 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 to witness his uh, glorious presence and, and the almighty God right before them. It, it had to be something uh, spectacular just to be with him in the garden. And, and God would come into the garden and meet Adam and Eve. Uh, it was a time of intimacy, a time for them to hear directly from God for themselves. 
it was a time to be closer to God and get closer to him and, 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 and just let him love on them and, and them try to return the love back to him because God said, if you draw nigh unto me, I'll draw nigh unto you. And so it was a time for getting closer to God a time to know him better on a deeper level. And if anything is true, all of us need to know God on a deeper level. Yeah, we, we need to get away from superficial religion that shows up. I'm trying to think when it shows up. It, superficial religion doesn't show up. It, 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 it doesn't exist. Because true religion is really loving God and really loving people. And that other stuff is not of God. We can act like we love people and act like we love God, but it's not of God. And so we have to learn how to get closer to him, let him love on us, so we can love on other people. And, and it, 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 but, but this was a time for Adam and Eve to get to know him better on a deeper level, a time for them to share what was on their heart and hear what was on his heart. In other words, it was a, it was a, a, a meeting, a, a time of exchange, a time of reflection, a time of talking and, and just being in each other's presence. It was a, a time of being completely intimate bearing their self before God, being naked and open before God. That's, that's what true intimacy is, where you're not hiding anything. What, what was the song uh, choir sings? Withholding nothing, where you don't hold anything back. God, this is who I am. This is what I am. You know me because you made me, Lord. It's just being honest with God because he knows all about us anyway. Talking about that secret place, uh, that secret place with God. I wonder, have you ever been there? Have you ever been in your secret place with God? Well, with Adam and Eve, it was a personal time and a specific place given uh, in the garden. No other creature on earth had experienced this type of relationship with God, this intimacy with God. Uh, God didn't come and talk to the animals. It was He used Adam to talk to the animals, but he talked to Adam and Eve. They were in that secret place, that sacred place with God in the Garden of Eden. That was until they disobeyed, until they ate of the forbidden fruit and uh, of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and, and were restricted, actually put out of the garden. But I believe up until they disobeyed God, they were meeting with God and they had him uh, to themselves and I believe it was a mind-blowing experience. H have you ever been so intimate with God that he's told you something just blew your mind? You just couldn't believe, and yeah, I, I've been there. I've, I've, been, <laughs> I've been there several times. But can you imagine literally hearing the voice of God? Not just every now and then, but hearing the voice of God every day. That's something, that's something, that's something. I know a lot of people act like they hear the voice of God every day, but I, I, I don't know. That's mind-blowing to me, to hear God's voice every day. They were in that secret place of God. It, it, it happened in the Garden of Gethsemane, and I, I believe that God wants to still have that same intimacy with us today. Are y'all listening to me? Oftentimes, we, we, have, we, we picture Adam and Eve in the Garden, and we we hear the voice of God come walking through the garden and, and Adam and Eve responding to that, that, that the, the presence of God and, and, and walking with him. And, and we've even made up a song to kind of uh, go along and, and speak of that, that uh, situation, that private time that they had with him. We, we, we uh, sing the song, but I, I wonder if that song is really a song that's in our heart or just something we've heard before. You know what song I'm talking about, don't you? Uh, uh, how, how does it go? I've come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses and he walks, yeah, 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 he walks with me, he talks with me, and he tells me that I am his own. Did he say y'all are his own? He tells me that I am. Make it personal. I'm, it's a personal thing. He says, and he tells me that I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. 
because God makes it so personal to each of us that we feel like nobody has experienced what I've experienced with the Lord. That's why I tell y'all all the time, I'm his favorite. Y'all may think you're his favorite, but he's told me, Richard, you're my favorite. He, in fact, he didn't have to tell me. I could see the favor that God has shown. But, but the point I'm making is we, we sing that song about walking in the garden with God and, 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 and just sharing the joy every day with him. But I, I wonder, it's a wonderful song, and it parallels the experience of Adam and Eve. But is it a real song that we sing in our heart, from the depths of our heart, that, that we've been in that secret place with him? It, it, it's supposed to speak and reflect of our, our relationship with God, but do we really have that personal daily encounter with the Lord in that secret place where we can commune with him every day? I, I wonder sometimes, uh, do, do you have a secret place? I'm going to challenge you. That's what I'm trying to do today, challenge you to find that secret place, like the psalmist said, that, that, that we ought to have that secret place with the Most High God. Well, before we can answer the question whether or not uh, our secret place is with the Most High God, let, let me try and get an understanding uh, uh, in what the psalmist meant when he said uh, the secret place of the Most High. And, and y'all bear with me for a minute. Bear with me for a minute. I just want to try and make this a little plainer. Uh, we have to go back to the, when we speak of the tabernacle and speaking of it from the perspective of the 91st Psalm, we, we have to go back to where uh, there was a tabernacle uh, that Israel carried around in the wilderness. And the tabernacle was a kind of a large tent-like structure. It, it was a portable structure where they could, when they got ready to move, they'd pull up the tent pegs and fold the tent up and, and put the uh, put everything on carts and, and move the tabernacle to wherever God told them to go. And, 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 and after they finally got in a permanent place and, and God said, okay, they, they built a permanent temple to worship God in. But in the tabernacle and in the temple, there was a place called the Holy of holies, and, and that was a place that was in the center of the tabernacle, in the center of the temple, and both of them had a place called the Holy of Holies, and the Holy of Holies represented the place where God dwelt. It, it, it represented the presence of God in the center of the temple, and it was a place where the priest went in one time a year to make atonement for the whole nation. And only the high priest could go in, and he had to make sure that he was consecrated, that he was clean, that he was sanctified before he went in, because uh, no sin can tarry in the presence of God. And if he had sin in his life and went into the holy of holies, he would literally drop dead. That's why they had a, a cord, a rope on, on the leg of the, of the priest, whoever went in there to perform that, the, uh, the sacrifice on behalf of the people. And he had bells around the bottom of his, uh, his garment. So if they heard the bell stop ringing for a while, they, they would figure he was dead and, and pull the rope and pull him out of the holy of holies. It was a holy place where the high priest went to meet God on behalf of the people. And, and it was so such a restrictive place, a, 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 a place where um, not just anybody can go, that this is believed to be what the psalmist was talking about when he said the secret place of the Most High in the temple, a place where very few people were allowed to go. And if people were unclean that went in there, uh, they came out dead because God did not allow sin in the secret place. But that was in the Holy of Holies. That, that was in the, the, the Old Testament. It was a secret place. Very few people went in, and only so, so many privileged folk were able to go into the secret place or the Holy of Holies. It was restricted under the Old Covenant, but now that we are under the New Covenant, now that we are under a much better covenant that has been ratified by the blood of the Lamb, by Jesus Christ himself, there are, uh, 
God is, is, is calling us to go into the holy of holies. In fact, in, in Ephesians, uh, second chapter, uh, it tells us that the middle wall of partition has been torn down between us and God. And because of the sacrifice that Christ made on our behalf, that, that, that curtain that, that separated us from going into the holy of holies before God, it said it was ripped down in two when Christ hung on the cross, when he paid the price for our sin. And now we have access into the holy of holies. Y'all not going with me today. I, I knew I should have got out my other shouting sermon. Y'all, y'all. Y'all got on your red. You want to tap dance and shout today in your red. See, I, I wore brown to be subdued and keep us grounded because we need to know. All right, I didn't get the memo. But we need to understand that God has a place that he wants us to be in, and that is in the secret place with him. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, 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 and the scripture testified that, that we have a right to go into that secret place because of what Christ has done on our behalf. Now, under the New Covenant, the, the New Testament, it, it's been ratified and established by the blood of Jesus Christ, and we have permission, we, have a, we even have a personal invitation to go into the throne of God. The writer of Hebrews puts it this way in the fourth chapter of the 16th verse. He said, let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. He invites us to come and come boldly. I know we don't want to go boldly sometimes because sometimes there's sin in our life. But even when there's sin in our life, God bids us to come unto him and, and not run the under, other way because when there's sin in our life, God is the only one that can handle the sin in our life. We can't handle it, and so we ought to run to him and not from him. When God came in the cool of the morning to talk to Adam and Eve, they had sin in their life. They knew they had sinned. That's why they covered themselves up, and they ran away from him instead of coming to him. But, but when we sin, we ought to be running to God, running to the holy of holies, and, and saying, God, forgive me. And so what am I saying? Sometimes when we get ready to go into that holy place, that secret place with the Lord, maybe we got to take off the fig leaf apron and just go bare before God. Quit trying to hide behind a whole lot of stuff, but just go to him just as we are. And I found out that if you go to him just as you are, he'll accept you just the way you are. He'll work on us and change us and try and make us better. But all you got to do is go to him just the way you are. Yeah, I'm talking about a secret place with God. Wherever you go, it, it, we, we, we need to go into that intimate place and be close up and personal with God. Make it our secret place. And let me tell you something, that secret place, that place where we meet God, it does not have to be in the church building. You don't have to come to, to church to meet God. No, no, no. It, 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 it may be, though, it, your secret place may be here at the altar, but it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be in a shrine or a temple. It does not even have to be in the church building at all. Uh, I, I realized that Moses found a secret place. It was out on the backside of the desert one day when he was tending sheep, and, and the bush kept burning, and that became a secret place for Moses where he met God, and God gave him instructions to go down and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. David had a secret place with God. It was not in a temple made by hand, but it was out in the pasture as he, as he tended the sheep where David wrote the, and, and penned so many psalms and wrote down, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. David met God in his secret place out in the green pasture. Isaiah found his secret place. It was in the temple, but it was not until the year that King Uzziah died. God had to move some things out of his way so he could see God better. And when, and when Isaiah got a good, good glimpse of God, the glory of God, and the angels going back and forth yelling, holy, 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 Isaiah realized he was unclean, and he said, I dwell amongst a people of unclean lips. He realized that he was dirty and he was not worthy to even be in the temple but because he confessed his sin 
the angel came and took the tongs and took a coal off the, off the fire, off, off the censer, and put it on his mouth and purified his mouth. And, and after he got purified, God cried out, who shall I sin and who will go for me? And, and because Isaiah was in that secret place with God, Isaiah said, hear my Lord, send me. I'm just trying to tell us we need to get to that secret place. Y'all making me work today, a secret place, secret. Does anybody know about that secret place? Yeah, yeah, there's a secret place that God is calling all of us to. I, I got another witness, Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas, you know about Paul and Silas, went all across the known world at that time, uh, 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 compelling people to become a Christian, and, and Silas was his partner, and one day they, they ran into some folk, didn't want to hear what they had to say, and they put him in jail. You know about that. Paul and Silas locked in a Roman jail. Well, they found their secret place in the corner of that jail cell. Yeah. Fell down on their knees and began to pray. And because God met them in that jail cell, in that secret place, in a dirty, no good jail cell, he met them there. And God opened up the doors of every one of the cells in the prison. Won't he do it? Yes, yeah. yeah, some of us need to testify that God has set us free opened up our own jail cells, but, but, but I, I just came to tell you that the secret place doesn't have to be any particular place. It's wherever you can meet God, wherever you can open up your heart and just bear yourself and just say, Lord, here am I. Work on me. John the Revelator found his secret place out on an aisle called Padmas. All by himself, nobody there to encourage him, nobody there to pat him on the back, nobody there to say amen to what he was preaching, what he was writing. But he, he found, but the Lord met him on that Isle of Patmos, and that became his secret place. Your secret place is wherever you can get naked before God and lay out on the altar and just, and, and just uh, put your stuff down at his feet and say, Lord, here am I. Use me wherever you can. That, that's your secret place. And, and let me tell you something. Wherever you find that secret place, that's where the throne of God is. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. Uh, you, we, 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 you, you can go directly to the throne directly into the holy of holies yourself, into the throne room of God. You don't need to ask anybody, take me to the throne. Take me to the king. You can go for yourself. That secret place, the secret place the psalmist was talking about. It's your secret place. Wherever you find God, wherever you can just, just like I say, just bear who you are and secret and, and let it all out, that, that's your secret place in God. We need to find that secret place. He's calling our names. Just like he called Adam and Eve for that secret walk and that secret place in the garden. He's calling us right now. And he knows your name. He knows our name. He knows what we've done. Yet he's still calling us to that secret place. And the truth be, be, may be told, we not have, may, may not uh, 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 be, be ready to go into the secret place, but God is ready for us. Let, let me say it again. We may not be ready, but God is ready. He knows all about us. He knows our deepest secrets. So, so don't stay out because you're afraid he's going to uh, uh, bring up something. He already knows everything about us. In fact, he's, uh, uh, he's, he's in that secret room waiting on us. Can't you hear him calling? Can't you hear him calling? He's calling your name. He's waiting for our personal relationship, for our personal fellowship with him one-on-one. -on -one. It's good to fellowship and worship with others. That's good. It, it, it's good and wonderful how good and wonderful it is when brethren come. That, that's wonderful in unity. That's great. But, but God is looking for a one-on-one -on -one with you and with me. One-on-one, one-on-one. -on -one, one -on -one. He's waiting in that secret place in that secret place where we can confess our sins to him and him alone and know that he will forgive us. He won't tell anybody else about it, but he'll clean, clean us up and he'll restore us to good status in that secret place, in that secret place where I can hear God clearly and, 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 and tune out all the noise of the world and all the noise coming from the White House and all the noise coming from the crack house and all the noise coming from 
your house and my house, but we can hear God clearly in that secret place, in that secret place where I can tell him all about my troubles, and, and I know he'll work all things together for my good, in that secret place where peace passes all understanding, in that secret place where he holds me. When I fall down, he picks me up. He reassures me that everything will be all right in that secret place where he's working all things together for our good. I wonder, do you know about that secret place? I'm just trying to tell you that God's got a secret place reserved for you, a secret place reserved for me. He wants to get intimate with us and just love on us like you've never been loved before in our secret place. I dare you to go to the throne room. I dare you to open up the door and walk in and see won't he bless you above your imagination and see won't he just pour out blessing after blessing but, but all we got to do is show up show up in that secret place uh, that secret place where he restore your soul restore your joy restore your happiness your health that secret place where he brings all things together and works them out for your good that secret place uh, i wonder do you have a secret place with the lord secret you don't have to run and shout and tell everybody about it. All you got to do is tell Jesus, and he'll handle it. That secret place. So many of us have been running from him for too long. And you know God's been calling your name. You know God's got something for you to do other than just say I'm a Christian and sit up on Sunday. You know God's got a work for you to do. He's got something with just your name on it that only you can do in the body of Christ. And he's saying you got to meet me in that secret place uh, and I'll help you, I'll fix you up, I'll empower you, I'll give you what you need uh, to bring it to pass in that secret place. Tell somebody the secret place, the secret place of the Most High where bodies are healed, where lives are restored, uh, that secret place uh, where restoration takes place. That secret place. That secret place. Mm. That secret place where they say like Campbell soup, God is mm, mm, good. He's good. Ain't God good? Oh, let me go old school on you. Ain't God good? Hadn't he been good to you? Won't he work it out? Won't he bring you out? Won't he bring you through? Well, if he's brought you through anything, and if you found your secret place in God, you ought to just wave your hand and tell him thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Lord, thank you for thinking about me. The secret place, the secret place, the secret place. That secret place. And have you ever had your own secret place? Let, let, let me tell the truth on this thing here. Every now and then I go to the grocery store and, and, and I get me some. I get me a box of ho-hos, or I get me some cupcakes. And, and I've done it before where I came and I got a little office in the house. And I put my cupcakes you know, on my little dress, on my little desk there. And, and, and every now and then, grandbaby come in there, grab a couple donuts, grab a couple cupcakes, and, and they end up missing. And when I get the sweet tooth start acting up, I don't have anything to satisfy it. So 
The next time I went to the store, got me some cupcakes, and I found me. And only me and God knew about the secret place. Now, now, secret place can be where you hide stuff. But I don't want us hiding stuff anymore. It's too important for us to hide our, our light under a bushel. It's too important for us to hide our gift in the ground. It's too important for us to hide our talent and don't let God, not letting God use it. But we've got to get to the place where God has fixed us where God has prepared us, where God has anointed us in secret so we can give him glory in open, in the public eye, in the church, in the community. We need to let God use us in the secret place. I'm through. Y'all stand to your feet. The secret place. The secret place. If you don't have a secret place, lean over. I'm just saying, if you don't have a secret place where you meet with God, lean over to your neighbor until I'm finding me my secret place. Uh, if you don't have one, if you already have them, if you already have your secret place, tell your neighbor, I got my secret place. I got my, I, I love that. I heard a lot more I got. Praise God. Come on, give God some praise for the secret place, the intimate place. Just you. worry about anybody else. Don't have to worry about him telling your business. He'll keep it secret. His love hides a multitude of sins. Thank God for the secret place. Come on, give him praise for your secret place. And like I said, it doesn't have to be here at the church. It doesn't have to be any place fancy. In fact, when you find your secret place, don't, don't dress it up. Don't dress up the place. It, it, it may be, I, I'm being serious. I, I'm not being funny. It may be in the bathroom. When you go in the bathroom, you just sit there and just pray. And just, it, it could be in the bathroom. It, it could be down in the basement. It could be in a, literally in a closet. Whatever you do, don't dress it up. Because if you start dressing up the place that's your secret place, you'll start worshiping the place. Let it just stay the way it is. Stay the way it is. But go in there and just you. And God, it may be your car out in, the, out in the driveway. It could be any place, but it's a place for you and God. Anybody got a secret place like that? I, I, I've, I've got a couple of them. I got a whole lot of secret places, Sister House. I, I, I made a secret place and grandbaby found that secret place. Down under the steps, down under the, in the basement. She found that place. I didn't want to hide anything. I was just going down there just to be by myself. And a little bitty cubby hole, Reverend Baskin. You're looking at me crazy, but it's a little bit. A, a, a full grown man barely fit in there, but that was my secret place. Just me and God. Just to get away from the world. Get away. Get away. And bask in his glory. There may be someone here that doesn't have a relationship with God. You're not saved yet, but you know God is speaking to you, and you know he's calling you to that place of intimacy, that place uh, of secrecy, where he won't put your business out there. You know he's calling you, and you haven't yet given up. Today is your day. If you're here today, and you want to be saved, and you know God is calling you, won't you come? Won't you come to the Lord? You're not necessarily coming to the church. You're not coming to me, but you're giving yourself to the Lord. And if you want to join this ministry, that's great. But the most important thing is that you are saved. Because we don't know how long we're going to be here on this earth. We've had a heavy schedule this week as far as homegoing services. Had three this, this week. And, and that, that just, reality just slaps you in the face when it happens like that. One every now and then you can kind of handle. It's really hard to handle anybody's passing away. But three is really a wake-up call. That we're not going to be here always. But Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden.
and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. If that's you today and you want to be saved, won't you come? Won't you come? If you're here today and you don't have a church home, we invite you to make Shiloh your church home. If you need a church home and God has laid it upon your heart to make this ministry your church home, won't you come? Call for salvation. Call for membership. Won't you come?